Our third month at Chateau Saint-Pierre. Squadron leader Rex still keeping the pilots on their toes with formation flying. All Spitfires operational, although there have been some problems with propellers. The pilots have settled into the routine of this phony war. Even if there is no action, the food is superb and there's always plenty of high spirits. The French are, for the most part, very hospitable and friendly, although there have been several complaints about dangerous flying. We have had our first casualty, an unfortunate accident, and a sad day for Hornet Squadron. The Luftwaffe are obviously feeling pretty bored as well. At least this war has a sense of humour. The battle must start soon. We supposed to play our battles. That's OK when the CO's leading the flight. It's really flashy, isn't it? You'll be like that when you grow up, Coxie. Come on, you lot, settle down. Right. What's that? Well, it's not one of ours. How did he ever pass the exam? I mean, any exam. We have to do this, chaps. It's a refresher just in case we meet the enemy. Try again, Sticky. It's not French, is it? Don't mess about. It's a Messerschmitt 110. Any advances? Junkers 88. Told you. 110. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Look at the twin tail fins. It's got um, two Daimler Benz engines, and they're as big as a Merlin, so it ain't slow. Might even win the war for them if they've got enough of them. No. Right. Any offers? Nasty brute, isn't he? Try it this way. Looks different, right? It's a Dornier reconnaissance bomber. Flying pencil. Four man crew, five machine guns. Oh, and at least a ton of bombs. Titan up, Red 3. As you wish, Red Leader. Can't stand people dawdling. Closer, closer! Closing in, Red Leader. You're still at least four yards out of position, Red 3. I didn't think so. This is Red Leader, and in my opinion, you are four yards out of position. Are you receiving me, Red 3? Unidentified aircraft, nine o'clock below. Maybe a Heinkel. Probably a French Moran. I'll take a look. It's a bloody Heinkel. This could be our lucky day. Check your safety catches. We'll get the sod before it gets home.
Gentlemen, our first war trophy. I think it'll look rather good over the mess bar. What about a swastika? Take it easy. Uh, Fritz, you speak English? Parlez anglais. I'm sorry about your colleagues. Uh, no more war for you, my old friend. Eh? You're well out of it anyway, Fritz. They'll take good care of you. French are good people. Any of you lot speak Deutsch? Uber Alice? Marlene Dietrich. We don't really need that flying officer, Catamount. Seems a decent enough chap. So, good to see you. You're an honor to the Luftwaffe. Well, good luck. Get away, you bastard. <laughs> Get your finger out. To the back, sir. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yes? Um, not my favorite poison. Weddings, birthdays. And apparently shooting down the Bosch. Will this be the standard celebration, do you think? Why not? I was just wondering. The Luftwaffe have about 1,500 bombers. <laughs> At this rate, total victory is going to place an enormous strain on the kidneys. They're all young and fit, you know. I was actually thinking about myself. Go on, get him! Get him! He's shaking, Moggy. Bugger off. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 ha! you, Moggy. Not at me! Come on, not at me! At him! That's it. Okay. Move back. Come on over there. Watch. I don't really care for this, Uncle. Get some more. Come on, Carl. Voltaire. They shouldn't throw Voltaire. You're so beautiful. Hmm. I'm supposed to say that to you. But I'm not, and you are. You're so young. 
and innocent. Perhaps you're perfect. <laughs> I'd say, steady on, old girl. Old oh, girl? Ain't that the best you can say? Well, it's a term of affection. For what? A horse? Don't you like horses? No, idiot. Oh. <laughs> you're just a bad loser. And are you English? Remember Jeanne d'Arc? She was born near here, and you've killed her. Not me, personally. Well, it was you, bloody English. Ah, oh, that was the army, not fighter command, old girl. Well, I suppose that's what you'd call a first-class cock-up. I wouldn't call it that, darling. See what you mean. Come on, Fitz. It's not the end of the world, you know. Isn't it? Of course not. It just takes practice. You sure? Well, of course. Well, it's a bit like riding a bike. All of a sudden, one day, it just comes naturally. Really? Really. Jesus, that's awful. It took me four years to learn to ride a bike. <laughs> you couldn't have been trying. Did you get any lemons? What for? I just read it somewhere that, um... Lemons are supposed to put lead in your pencil. <laughs> lemons? Hmm. Could have been melons. <laughs> Forfeits. You'll have to wait till the summer. Just my bloody luck. I haven't got time, my sweet. Seen this? Bloody hell, who'd do that? Maybe the French don't like us. Perfidious Albion, all that stuff. <laughs> Is it for me or for Mary? God knows. I wouldn't worry about it. Maybe they don't like our uniforms. <laughs> you have a good time? Oh, well, you know, the usual. How about you? Oh, smashing. Really? She certainly knows her onions. What do you mean? Well, you know, everything. <laughs> oh, yes. You said she knows a lot about biology. She certainly does. should be hundreds of bullet holes. Most of the shots missed. So what? We shot it down, didn't we? It was a Mickey Mouse kill. Six against one, he had an engine on the blink. It was like rolling a drunk in the street. Our guns are harmonized for the wrong distance, Fanny. Oh, yeah? Well, they seem all right to me. Our bullets converge at 400 yards. Any closer in, you're overshooting. Yes, that happens to be from Fighter Command's manual, the, the doubting, doubting spread. spread. To compensate for pilot error. All that means is that the average RAF fighter pilot is a lousy shot. Oh, come on, Chris. Anyway, you got close enough. That's because I harmonized my guns at 250 yards. You did what? And if I were you, I'd do the same thing. Next time, it may be one-on-one -on -one instead of six-on-one. Okay. 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 
Enjoy this, sir. Henri keeps a very fair table. Country cuisine rather than metropolitan fare. Oh, yeah. This old Henri does a very decent Scotch smoked salmon. How does he get that, I wonder? People are always going to and fro to London, aren't they? Hmm. Burfont Crook is really quite excellent. Your Heinkel went down well with HQ? I'm glad, sir. I'm not divulging a secret. We've put you up for a DFC. What do you say about that? An honour for the whole squadron, sir. We can't give one to all of them, so we'll give one to you. I'm deeply honoured. Always nice for the family, if nothing else. Quite, sir. Come in. Am I intruding, young man? Not at all, my pleasure. Can I offer you a drink? That's not a bad idea. I have to have a few words with you. Yes, I've been waiting for it. Ah. Well, far be it from me to curb a chap's style. Everybody else tries, Uncle. Do they? It's hardly surprising, eh? It's not usual for a junior officer to criticize fighter command's tactics. Even when they're wrong? I fought them before. Well, we're not in Spain. And may I point out that you were on the losing side? No, thank you. I think that some of the chaps are a bit bored by your experiences in Spain. Anything else? For some reason, you don't admire, or even like, the CO. The rest of us know when we're well off. Yeah, sure, the food's great. Yes, it bloody is. And the wine. Gramophone records, latest magazines, English beer. Who pays for all that? Squadron leader Rex. So if I don't behave nicely, Rex is going to cancel the tackler. You're very difficult, aren't you, Hart? As I should mention, good manners. <laughs> very British. Well, the RAF happens to be British. We do things in our own way. Such as squash courts are for officers only. Oh, Christ. We have a system, and by and large, it works. Yes, it's called snobbery. It's one of the less attractive features of the service. You may think so, but your treatment of Todd resulted in embarrassment and humiliation. Are you kidding? That wasn't my fault. Well, Todd thinks it was. He's asked to be transferred from your flight. He should have known that anyway. Your family background, etc. What were you trying to prove? Democracy, maybe? Ah, that. Well, it's all right in its place. Yeah. It's a question of fitting in, old boy. Yeah. You excelled yourself on me. Oh, my pleasure, my lord. So many of my customers do not appreciate the great vintages. Hmm. First class. Merci. Bon appétit, my lord. Bon chance, Henri. I think you're going to enjoy this, sir. Why not, eh? What's all this business of my lord? I think it amuses him. You haven't encouraged this notion, have you? They expect it of me. How's our American? Settling in? Afraid not. He doesn't like our battle tactics, and he wants to change the harmonization on our guns. We're going to do that anyway. At 400 yards, we can't hit anything at that range. That's the experience of other squadrons. How interesting, sir. Is he a good pilot? And that depends. Frankly, what gets on my nerves is his rotten formation flying. It's quite deliberate. I really don't see that I can stand for that. I shall have to chop him. Like hell. We need him. Well, I certainly don't need him, sir. The powers above, we need America's help to fight this war. Or well, so I'm told. But why that should be, I've no idea. They weren't much use last time, so it was too late. We need publicity, or perhaps propaganda in the wonderful USA. 
Heart stays. Sorry. Politics. Of course. I want to see Hart in the thick of things. Make sure he shoots down a Jerry as soon as possible. You've only seen one, sir. Look for another one. Is that an order, sir? Not an order, Rex, but it's bloody good advice. I thought I'd see you at the cottage. Been here long? Not really. Nothing wrong, is it? No, no. Um, Mary's a bit tired, that's all. Bloody cold, isn't it? The cold's never tired. Really? Good for her. Do you take any precautions, Fitz? For what? Oh, you know. Oh, precautions? I uh, see what you mean. Well, do you? Um, sort of. How about you? And we try. Nicole wants a baby. Christ, why? Why not? Perfectly natural thing for a girl. What, a woman? Doesn't she want to be married first? Ah. Didn't she say anything about that? Yes, I suppose she did. Flash. Hmm? Didn't you ask? There's nothing wrong with marriage, you know. Oh, no, I think it's, um... It's just uh, old wedding bells, eh? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Flash. Hope you'd be very happy. Well, piece of cake. Reading, young Pitt. Oh well, no, not really. All in French. One of the problems of living in France. Mm. Been out? Yes. You know about everything, don't you, Skull? Just a rumor, actually. Well, do you know anything about lemons? Melons? You're not thinking of starting a greengrocer's shop? <laughs> Christ, no. <laughs> you married? Not at all. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Why? There's nothing. You see, it's this um, friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He's got a bit of a. Problem. Yes. He's got a girlfriend. Uh, this friend of mine, you see. Um, and he can't seem to... He can't seem to warm up his engine. Well, I'm sure your friend can get a book about it. You could do something for your friend. You're going on leave. Seven days, lucky chap. Drop in at Foils. It's a bookshop. Oh. If you want my advice, I should tell your friend not to worry about it. Well, that's what I told him. Then you've solved the problem. You see? I knew you'd know about everything. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you, Skull. Seven days. <laughs> Lost, Moggy. They're gone. Oh, no. You rotten sod. 
Why go home anyway? Stay with your girl. Well, I've got to go and see my parents. Father's been ill. You know what parents are like. See ya. The idea is simple. You'll be taken by lorry to the Vosges region here. You'll be dropped separately in various remote spots. You'll come back here under your own steam. Four days, that should do it. No map, no compass, and a hundred francs in your pocket. Any questions? Oh, thank you for joining us, Flying Officer Catamount. I don't want any criminal behavior, none at all. There may be some companies of French mounted troops out looking for you and their dogs. Somewhat ill-mannered, I believe. Remember, you are officers in the Royal Air Force, so don't stand any nonsense from them. I don't think you'll have time for winter sports. Why not, sir? This is a serious exercise. I'm a serious skier. Any questions? Are you going to lead us, sir? I know how to survive. I'm going to Paris. Uh, but you'll have Flight Lieutenant Kellaway and uh, Flying Officer Skelton here to hold the fort. All right. Good luck, chaps. If you could select your stuff. We'll get double pneumonia. They're young, fit chaps. Nonsense. Should have listened to my mother. She's always knitting things. Is that how she made you? Un Bosch. Recherche les gendarmes. Dis-le qu'il y a un Bosch à la ferme. Camarade. The English. Royal Air Force. Don't take it off. I'm tired of the Mills brothers, or whatever they're called. The other side, old man. I thought it was too quiet. What? It would have to be Moggy. Accident prone. Not him. Everything that happens to him is deliberate. I wonder what he's been up to. I don't know, robbed a bank, I suppose. Oh, well, I suppose I'd better go and see what he's done and pay for the damage. I'm very touched by Fitz's concern. You must know that he cares for you. Yes, of course. He's very conscientious, isn't he? In some ways, older than his years. In some ways, younger. Oh, but I'm sure you know that. He does get awfully anxious at times. Really? Just little things. Well, I haven't even offered you a drink. I should have brought something. Of course not. I've got lashings of wine. Do you like white? I'm in your hands, Mrs. Blandon. Oh, please, Mary. Then you must call me Lutz. I thought everyone called you Moggy. Oh, you know about me. Well, Fitz has talked about you. I'm honoured. Now, that's why I dropped by, really. Just to make sure you were sort of all right. He really cares about his parents. I always like that quality, don't you? Oh, may I? Thank you. I wonder what Fitz is up to at this moment. After entertaining his parents, I have no doubt young Fitz is on the spree. Does he usually do that? Oh, after he's written a letter to you, Mary. And then painting the town pink, drinking the bars dry, and reminding society that nobody's daughter is safe when a fighter pilot's on the loose. Oh. He's a very dependable chap, young Fitz. He's a very good dancer. Is he really? Well, I suppose you like dancing as well. You've certainly got the figure for it, Mary. I don't know about that. Uh, do you like Tommy Dorsey? Mm, my favourite, funnily enough.
You're a very good dancer, Maggie. Well, as they say, it takes two. Stay. Oh, Mary. You're not hurt. Well, Moggy's going to take care of you. They hate the English. I mean, some of them. And there we are, defending you from old Jerry. Odd, isn't it? It is odd. <laughs> I'm such a terrible crybaby. No wonder my sweet is soaking wet. <laughs> Good wine as well. You'll get a chill. Better take it off. Leave me. Take care. Where the hell have you been? Catch me. Schnapps? Made in Germany? Where did you get that? Mum's the word, old boy. We're secret agents. Rex thought you were dead. You should have been here three days ago. The roads were falling. Something to do with the war. I want to see you a lot. Right now. Switzerland? Yes, sir. I sent you on a survival exercise. You certainly did. I may be wildly wrong about this, but isn't Switzerland a neutral country? So I believe, sir. And as our intelligence officer scowled, could you confirm this? It is not a belligerent state. It never was. The next question is, how did you get into neutral Switzerland? He had his U.S. passport and his uncle works at the American Embassy in Bern. Actually, he's the ambassador. Well, that explains everything. And then? Well, and we, then uh, uh, Flying Officer Miller, perhaps. Well, it was smashing. I went to the pictures. Superb hotel. I mean, the bar never closed. And then he bought the Mercedes, second hand, of course. And we went to Chamonix for a bit of skiing. Couldn't get through to start. The pass was closed. Appalling luck. Well, Chamonix's pretty good. And hard. Did you have enough loose change in your pocket to buy the Mercedes? No, I had to phone my bankers in New York. How lucky you had sufficient in your current account. That was lucky, sir. You deliberately ignored my orders. You didn't tell us not to go to Switzerland. Should I be amused by that? I think not. I posed you a problem. And we saw... Don't interrupt. Hart, you knew what was intended. The spirit of the exercise was perfectly obvious. And you dodged it. In your own way. You dodged it. That's all. Off you go. The trouble with the rich is they think they can buy their way out of everything. I suppose. You should know. I beg your pardon? Ah, yes. What I meant was, well, by any normal standards, your family is extremely rich. Is it not? Is it? I think people know that. Everyone knows. I don't want people thinking I'm a soft touch. Well, you are. Not true. You pay half everybody's mess bills. Because this squadron is something rather special. At least to me. Agreed. Could I say something? Difficult to stop you, Scarl. It just seems to me that you're taking it personally. They did exhibit considerable initiative. Don't you think? All I say is this. What does Mr. Hart do if he bumps into a flock of Messerschmitt 110s? Cable is bloody banker. Come on, champs. You're almost threatening to buy me a drink. I think Scar's in the chat. On my measly 11 shillings a day. C 
CEO's office. Good God, thank you. No drinks, I'm afraid, sir. It's a scramble. quite clear in my view. It was a shambles, Uncle. I wouldn't say that. Really? Well, I would. And will they learn? Formation discipline is the key. They don't regroup in a bloody great mess. We destroyed a Heinkel and a probable. Hardly a major victory, our score. Pip Patterson's in hospital. Shock and a fearful bump on the head. He'll be out in a day. Poor old Miller. Well, they've identified the body. And Flash, God knows. Three of them certainly saw him bail out and confirm that the parachute opened. He can't be too far. I suppose I should address the squadron. 
The game's afoot. The struggle is becoming more arduous. Now's the time to stand shoulder to shoulder. Let us close ranks and show the Bosch what we're made of. You're not actually going to say that. Mine, well, what's wrong with that? Oh, I... Yes, I'm sure that's the right sentiment. lunch, I'm afraid. First class partridge as well. No complaints about the catering. Dinner. Soup of the day, patty of salmon, saddle of lamb. Oh, jolly good jam, roly-poly. The French can't do that sort of thing. April, sir. Do you shoot, Trevelyan? Not really, sir. Plenty of wood pigeon around here, and there's a rumour of deer. Not my sort of thing, but the CO wants to see everyone involved in country pursuits. Now, what else? Oh, Sticky, new boy Trevelyan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet uh, you. Billiards, squash, uh, ping pong, uh, incredible cellar, and um, what? Oh, library, do you read? It's not really a hobby of mine. Mahjong, bridge, and a spot of backgammon. Well, I'm sure we can accommodate you, but don't play poker with the American. American? Oh, yes. Uh, an Irishman, a Scotchman, and well, several Englishmen. Uh, that's not a joke, incidentally. He bloody is, Uncle. Good God, I was about to write a letter to your father. Oh, it bloody worked, you know. I never thought it would. But a loud bang, kick up the armpits. Nasty one in the crotch as well. And then there's this miraculous thing above your head. All I wanted was a harp and a celestial choir and I'd be in the promised land. Hello, who's he? He doesn't look like an angel. Oh, this is... Where's Air Vice Marshal bloody Rex? Now, when I was wafting through the heavens, I thought to myself, when I get back, I'm gonna kick the great Rex up his ass. He's a disaster, that man. You drunk? Not me. Are you sure? Sober as a squadron leader. Yeah. Bit early for me. It's never too early in Hornet Squadron. Now, come on, old chap. Is he a pilot? Of course he is. Has he met the CO yet? Are you replacing my old friend Miller? One of the best old Miller, and you couldn't say that of the CO. Have you ever been tail end, Charlie? Well, if the CO asks you to be tail end, Charlie, just shoot him. That's enough, Flash. Well, if Rex asks you to be tail end, Charlie, you get on a bus and stay there for the duration. <laughs> I love a good stuff, this. Now, come on, old chap. Hey, oh, Michael, you're my friend. Of course I am. Are you my friend? Of course I am. Is he my of course he is. I think I'm... This young fellow needs to sleep it off. Is he wounded? Blotto, sir. Oh, this is Pilot Officer Trevelyan. Delighted to board his parachute back anyway. Bastard. What's he muttering about? No idea, sir. Show us Have you bailed out Trevelyan? No, sir. I'm taking a bay flight in an hour. Perhaps you'll join us. That'd be great, sir. Routine patrol. But you can see what we do. I like a tight formation, no dawdling. You can be tail and Charlie, okay? Absolutely, sir. Hey, give me a hand. I thought he was dead. Good pilots don't die. They're too bloody stupid. Come on, Flash. Get his jacket off. I'm gonna pip. I'm gonna kill Rex. Get your clothes off first. Why don't they learn? Do you think he needs a doctor? No, he'll be all right. It's just another nasty hangover. Of course, you saw him shot down. Yes, then I got jumped on. May happen again. I hope not. What did the MO say? Concussion. Sprained neck, shoulder. 
Just rest, he said. Fourteen days leave. I haven't had a note from him. No? <sighs> You'll be all right once you get back into a spit. I was nearly a goner. Did the doc give you anything? Couldn't bloody sleep. Seems to work with Flash. Our new pilot's an old Etonian. How grand. Rex is delighted. He likes good manners. Style, that's the thing. Now that's style. Crisp and tidy. You recognize them when they take off style? They all seem the same to me. Not true. That's Fanny Barton. Careful man. Just enough throttle. He's read the book. That's Cox. Leaves his wheels down for a few seconds. Just in case. You recognise him, don't you? I haven't got a clue. That's old Moggy, for God's sake. Don't you recognise Moggy? Look, look. Now that's style. Retracts his undercarriage as soon as he's airborne. You see, the wheels spoil the look of the thing. That's important for Moggy. I'm amazed. What? Your keen observation. It's obvious, surely. <laughs> look, look, look. Now that's our transatlantic cousin. Really? No messing around with him. A natural, a confident young man, our master heart. Oh dear, slow, fussy. What's he doing? Not the old Etonian. Mm. Still thinking about Waterloo. Rex won't like that. You're quite a psychologist, Uncle. Philosopher, even. Sage of the skies. You do talk a lot of tosh, don't you, old man? <laughs> <laughs> 